welcome to Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutfer. Hello. Hello. Today, Why do you not have a last name in the intro? You're Jamp just and Jamp. Lu- You're a sound. Why do you have two have, names you I name? I don't have a last name. Either. You're the, yeah, you're, you're the, the, you're the, the outlier, outlier here. Sweet. All right. That's because cool. no one knows who you are. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <That's your name. laughs> Sorry, Corey. Carry on. Today we'll be covering vegan leather and a fun guy. Ooh. Vegan leather. Yeah. Wait, does this mean that they're using funguses, fungi, to grow a vegan leather alternative? Maybe. Did I do it again? Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined it again. <laughs> Woo! My one skill. <laughs> Is this about a hat? What? No, I know. I, I know. just told you what it's about. It, it, no, but I know some guy that made a hat out of mushrooms. I thought <gasps> that. Yes, Paul Stamets. Paul, Paul Stamets. Stamets made a hat out of a certain type of mushroom. Yeah, I'm not talking. So about it could this be. Guy. A, it could be a fake leather hat. It could be a it's not that at all. No, well, well that's, way off the that's, mark. Should we let Corey do his job? No. Why don't I tell you what it's actually about? <laughs> yeah, go on. But I'm not going to tell you what it's about. I'm going to start off by talking about plastic packaging. Of course you are. Because of course I am. Plastic packaging is destroying our planet and we desperately need a solution to the problem or we'll all very soon be wiped off the face of the planet by climate change. And SCOBY might be that solution. Mm, I don't really agree with what you just said. Plastic packaging is destroying the oceans. It's not causing global warming, which is what will kill us. (laughs) Yes. They're different things. We will still still be wiped off the face of the planet by climate change and the production of of plastic is... um, Horribly terrible for the environment. Yeah, but it's, and it's not, all made from it's all made from oil. I so. know that it all kind of comes from the same place, and it all also has detrimental things in the environment. But the reason why we're going to die in climate change, like climate change, is because of CO two and the greenhouse gas effect, not because of plastic. Just saying, I take issue with your intro. We're not even two I minutes apolog- into the podcast. I apologize. We've got a correction. I, I do think that if the levels of life in the sea go down, then we also will have some other knock-on effect have on other the climate. Problems. So you are probably right eventually, but. Not for the reason you thought. Carry on. <laughs> Back to plastic packaging. You guys know how that works. <laughs> plastic packaging? Uh, yeah, just packaging. General. Hydrocarbons. <laughs> okay, I should be specific. How does packaging work to stop fruit, fruit from going off? Uh, because they pump it full of nitrogen so there's no air and then they oxidization cannot happen. That's exact, yeah, that's exactly it, essentially. Sweet! <laughs> essentially, if you want to package something, you just want to... Have you learned it. this before? No, I just did chemistry. Uh, level. Okay. <laughs> you just got to get rid of the air. Yeah, the air is basically. what makes it go off. Generally, we use plastic... Which is terrible. Uh, and in 2016, 169 kilograms of packaging waste was generated per inhabitant in the EU. 169 Lovely. kilograms per inhabitant? Yeah, in a year. Of plastic? Of plastic. Jeez. What? That's per, like half a kilogram a day? Per person. Per person. That's like two people's weight worth. Okay, that's weird because I don't use an awful lot of plastic. I'm mean, sure I use some. Everyone uses some. But you don't, don't realise how much... You say that, but you don't realise how much you use. Maybe. If you well, think about... I, do, I do the recycling in my house. I know how much I use. Mm, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. I mean, but the, the average person who doesn't really care about it. I suppose as well, like, I might buy something that was shipped in plastic. And that exactly. would count as me using plastic, even if the shipment plastic mm. was disregarded by the supermarket. Before exactly. And mm. you can use a lot of plastic in one go. That's and not even think about it. And 40% of the plastic produced is packaging used just once and then discarded. Fun fact, though, today, um, the government have announced, or some, some member of the government, I think it might be Michael Gove, has just given his go-ahead for the proposal that we have a plastic um, deposit scheme, which is, like, massive in Europe. And, and also in America, they have a bottle deposit scheme where basically every pla- every plastic <gasps> bottle you buy, there'll be a surcharge on it of, like, 5p. And then if you give if you it back, it, you get, you get the the 5p. Which is yeah. lovely because also it means that people who are struggling for work or like, are homeless. I know that's not an ideal way to live yeah. or make your living, but you can collect bottles yeah, yeah. and clean up your... And that is something to do i've seen videos i've seen i've seen videos like this on twitter of people putting the plastic bottles back in the machine it's like it looks like a reverse vending machine it's the called a reverse in. vending is machine. that what it's called yeah. oh, have you guys have you guys heard of the guy in germany that has just been fined a lot of money for <laughs> for like faking plastic. for fake yeah well no wow. no for what? essentially he he worked out a way to trick the machine into thinking that he was putting lots and lots of bottles in uh, stop because i think this one he stopped it from being shredded so it just registered it going in 
and then he used the same bottle over and over. Like and made... Top Cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Top Cat. In the Top Cat intro, there's a thing where he has a coin and a string. Yeah. And he puts it in the vending machine. Oh, and yeah. Pulls and it pulls back it back out. out and then he gets away. his free food. I always used to think that would be such a good thing to do, but I never so tried it. so hard to tie a string around a coin. I'll tell I you once that. tied a string around a bee, but we'll not go there today. Oh, yeah. We killed it. killed it. No, I, the first one lived. The second one The second one. one. Second, we got, Sorry. <laughs> you, you put a bee in the freezer and it passed killed the bee. So 18 billion pounds of plastic waste goes into the oceans every year from coast, uh, from coastal regions, which is obscene. These are, this is just stats about plastic. It's yeah. really bad and really awful and depressing. I had to take a break after researching this. And uh, another one, nearly half all the plastic that's ever been made was made after the year 2000. Wow. Exponential right? increase. And, okay, so it's been... It's, they started plastic production, I think, around about the 50s. Mm. <sighs> so in the past, say, 20 years... That's actually less than I would have expected. I would have expected it to be like half of all the plastic we've ever used was yeah. in the last like half a year or something. Just awful. But like to be fair, from that like, we've been trying to reduce yeah, and recycle yeah, yeah. Yeah. since like the noughties. Pretty cool. Yeah. Less than a fifth of all that plastic is recycled. Which less is than a, a fifth. Less than a fifth. Less than a fifth. Which is part of the reason. Is this in the EU? Just in the EU? No, this is uh, global. global. Yeah. So this is part of the reason that we have the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Oh, Do you I guys know about that? Have you I, heard it? I've seen videos of it. I don't know where it is, though. Is it like an it's island made out of garbage? Oh, it's... Wow. <laughs> an, it's Yeah, it's an island. It's a, it's a big island. And then things live on it. I don't think anything necessarily lives... Oh, this must be something different. What, what are you thinking of? There's this beach... There's this um, country. I don't know where it is, but... The shores are basically just like littered with... Pla- you can't see the sand. It's just... You're definitely thinking of something different. I'm thinking... This, different. So this is a floating... Um, basically, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the biggest accumulation of uh, plastic in the world wow if you're listening uh, to this go and google that because it is just like horrible to yeah, look at it's awful to look at i've got some stuff yeah it's ridiculous i've got some stuff here on it because they did some research on it recently which is really oh my it's kind God. of horrifying i've so not it's between, seen those pictures before yeah it's between hawaii and california in the pacific ocean and it covers an estimated surface area of about 1.6 million square kilometers. Do you have a oh. comparison of that? To I do. A country? No, I do. It's okay. uh, twice the size of Texas or oh. three times the size of France. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Texas is bigger than France. You could fit most of mainland Europe inside of uh, Texas. Wow. Yeah. Texas is big. Wait, so this p- patch of rubbish is twice the size of most of mainland Europe? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Western Europe, yeah. Not good. Ugh. And that that means that it's bigger than it's bigger than any state in America. Wow. If they if they wanted, right? So put it this way: if they wanted to make the garbage patch a state, yeah. which is I think it's about the same, it's about as close as Hawaii is mm. to, or closer than Hawaii to the U.S. It would be the biggest state, and people could like conceivably like, you could fit basically everyone in America onto this. Should, That's we, disgusting. should we invade it and declare ourselves president of the garbage patch? You wouldn't necessarily <laughs> want to do patch. that because it stinks. I would be, pre- be president of something. It's better than being president of nothing. Yeah, president, president of, of the garbage, garbage patch. <laughs> yeah, president of garbage. What are you, president of nothing? Actually, president of this yeah. president clean of the, room. He's the president of the, of, the, of the podcast, isn't he? Yeah. It's president actually really thing. interesting how they figured this out because... How, how would you go about... <laughs> well, how would you swim go, around? How would you go about measuring it? something that's the size <laughs> or bigger than Texas? Well, a satellite picture. Yeah, but it's it's moving as well. Satellite picture that's not moving. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not yeah, a satellite you'd have to, you'd have to You'd essentially have to... You'd have to estimate it, but... <laughs> I, I'd get... You know, yeah. the, you know the app it's, on the iPhone, yeah. Measure... Where you can like use AR, you just use get a AR lot of kit. iPod, strap yeah. to a satellite. Yeah. You use AR kit and you point it at the first point, and then you move along. Second point, click it, and then it tells you the size. And you can start arranging. Well, that's like, close. Checkmate, Cory. Instead of using an iPhone, these guys yeah, use thirty. <laughs> plays put like an, an IKEA sofa. You can play Pokemon Go on the giant garbage <laughs> patch. Yeah. Wow, I caught Pikachu at the garbage. <laughs> Instead of doing that, they yeah. used 30 boats, 652 surface nets, and two flights over the patch. Well, you know what's really ironic about that? All those that. boats probably generated loads of CO2, and if they'd just gone up in their little little to a little satellite and taken a picture, they would have wasted less CO2, and we wouldn't be living in this horrible global warming world That's we now That's so live true, in. because it doesn't take any CO2 to get a satellite into space. Not if it's already there. <laughs> Exactly. Terrible logic. All our satellites were too busy spying on the Chinese. We can't help it if someone else sent one out there. <laughs> to be fair, I'm sure there's a couple <laughs> spying on the Russians. There's and a couple not... spying on the Russians? Yeah. 
what, like a man and a woman, or a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, a woman and a woman, don't be sexist. Or, right? you know, non-binary people, Luke. <laughs> Sorry, I tried so hard! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we are. <laughs> what, how did we get here? <laughs> so, roughly how many pieces of plastic do you think are in the garbage patch? 12 mm. billion. Billion? You're going billion? Yeah. I was going to go hundreds of millions, but maybe that's not enough. Oh, wow. You Is it hundreds are, of billions? You guys are both off. It's really 1.8 trillion pieces. <gasps> what? <gasps> What? Yeah. Uh, I was too optimistic by no, saying really hundreds of millions. Yeah. But it's it's there's lots of like <laughs> microplastics as well, which which are like really beads. the issue. Like yeah, micro porous so, beads. So it weighs about eighty thousand tons. Wow. Which if you if you want to know, that's I about could the, bench that. I reckon. You reckon the, you bench that? It's the weight of five hundred jumbo jets, Luke. I don't think you can quite bench. I could bench the weight of five hundred jumbo jets, Corey. What are you on about? <laughs> I've seen your arms. They are scrawny. <laughs> <laughs> so is plastic. Not 500 jumbo jets of plastic. Wait, what if you... I know, solution. We get all that plastic and we pump it full of helium and then it just floats away. <laughs> How much of that plastic is helium in, in the sky? <laughs> you know, there is a reason we can't just litter in space. I think what? we've mentioned it before. If you if you chuck anything into orbit, it's it's going to start travelling so fast. Oh, it's it, a projectile, yeah. Yeah, it, it will just destroy oh, yeah. anyone that tries to go up there. Don't so, go up there then. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> just stay on Earth and sometimes die like I, everyone else. Sometimes yeah. I find myself stumbling into space, <laughs> hit, by hit by a projectile. <laughs> <laughs> so the that's not even including the outer region. So the, when I say it's uh, eighty thousand tons, that's only the the bit that the they main, measured in the middle. The main island. Yeah, there's these like out- the black hole. <laughs> Yes, like the, the, event event, the event horizon. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. So there's this, then there's, there's the Hawking radiation all around the edge. <laughs> well, there's a, yeah, there's a less dense uh, sort of ring around the around the outside, and if you include that, it goes up to about a hundred thousand tons. Oh, oh, that's, that's not too much more. That's the Kuiper it's, belt. It's still a hundred thousand oh, no, tons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they've they've been measuring the, the plastic in the patch since the 1970s, and it's it's still it's getting bigger. Can so you, it does it does lose plastic, but it still it takes in more than it's losing. Can you give me a well, but I mean, it doesn't really matter if it loses plastic because that plastic's still in the ocean, which is kind of like not where it should be. <laughs> it's just floated somewhere it's else. Like, oh, wow, the patch is smaller, S- but solution. the rest of the ocean's screwed. So mm. is there a reason why we, like in all seriousness, why we can't measure this from space? Um, I'm not really sure the reason that we can't measure it from space. Because it should probably... show up as a country. Yeah, it's probably just I difficult can... to image it accurately. Probably. Maybe it's also quite a lot of see-through plastic. Yeah. So it just looks like ocean. It's, it's probably difficult to see it Interesting. From, a, from a satellite picture. Presumably. Have they tried? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> Damn, we didn't think of that. Guys, I've been listening to Psy Guys <laughs> and I've got an idea. <laughs> the NASA intern <laughs> just like... <laughs> they've already, the thing is, they've already measured it, so that'd be ultimately <laughs> useless. Yeah. Corey in five, in five years. Guys, I've got a, a letter <laughs> from somebody. Hello, I work <laughs> for the US military and we've started imaging the giant blob of plastic in the sea. <laughs> yes, the military want to turn it into a base. That's why they're the ones that are doing it. The military want to turn everything into a base, Cory. So what do you think is what do you think is the main cause of the garbage patch? What plastic. kind of plastic? What well, yes. Plastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say bottles of bottles of water. Oh, it's definitely plastic. <laughs> definitely plastic straws, isn't it? It's actually not is plastic it straws. The tiny <laughs> tiny little micro pleasant. things that you have in skin skin. No, it's not those. Not in fact, fish, uh, you basically nets, right? yeah, it's fishing nets. It's forty percent fishing nets. Forty six percent fishing nets. Yeah. Right. Well, we don't have anything to be guilty about. Then we're vegan. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It's it's people do- basically. If you don't want to destroy the oceans, stop fishing. Yeah. Stop it's it's fish. very simple. That's what I always say. <laughs> I mean, the ocean is just fish and water, and we're yeah. not taking the water out. We're taking the fish out and leaving plastic in, the, in its place. Plastic fish, though. That will solve all of our problems. Yeah. Except it won't because the plastic gets shredded and turns into microplastic, which gets into the fish and then gets into us and then we die. Not me. I don't eat fish. Nope. Stop eating fish. I win. Yeah. So as I said, they they deteriorate and that's usually by sun exposure and the waves and just all of the, like being exposed to the elements. Mm. But it's not like it's, you think it's like it's degrading maybe, but it isn't degrading. It's just getting kind of smaller. Is that not what gr- degrading is? Well, in that it's it's not broken down right biologically in any way. It's just in little pieces. It's just smaller pieces, yeah. right? And that's also like you, we're advised, like if you've left a bottle of water out in the sun, don't drink from it. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. As as in, no. No. True. As in, no. Don't do no, that. No, we're not advised. <laughs> no, we're no, not. We're not. not. Um, no, don't do that. Which means that we're doing that like all day, every day, with these bottles of that are in the sea, and then fish yeah. are drinking it, and then we're drinking mm. the fish and and you you say that it's not just that but also <laughs> drinking the fish but also other animals <laughs> are just 
eating them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, obviously there's the old one that sea turtles see plastic bags and think that's a nice looking jellyfish. Nom. And then die. <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought that's a nice looking jellyfish. Yeah, yeah but you don't eat off. jellyfish, do you? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you wouldn't be a good vegan if you ate jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have brains. I reckon that would be like, if you're going to eat something, jellyfish is probably all right. <laughs> and snails. Yeah, no, it kind of snails bites Snails don't back. have brains. No, no, snail, but snails are still... Mm, I think snails... You wouldn't, wouldn't snail like show them. emotion. Oh, I stood on a slug the other day and I got so sad. <laughs> what the hell is this murder tale you are telling us? Go back to the dark. oceans. <laughs> Go and tell us about the oceans. No more killing animals. <laughs> Um, mm, these poor fish. Oh. So the animal died from the plastic in the oceans. I don't know. What, I don't know what to tell you. They're they're dying. Let's let's stop doing that. Yeah, I agree. Stop eating oh, fish. Oh, and just for reference, microplast microplastics. Michael Plastic. Michael Plastic. Michael Plastic. <laughs> Michael Plastic. Uh, Professor Michael Hello, Plastic. Hello, Michael. Thank you for listening. Uh, microplastics are about 0.05 to 0.5 centimeters. What's even smaller is that nanoplastic. Uh, I don't, they don't really measure. I don't know. Well, they should. <laughs> Look, the, the the chart that I looked at online only went down to microplastic. Atomic plastic. You can actually have an atom of plastic because no. it's a molecule. It's a carb, a hydrocarbon. It is. So let's start talking about Scoby. Scoby do. Scooby Doo. I actually, I actually already have Scooby Dooby Doo written down as the title of the episode. <laughs> now it can be because we said it in the episode. Wow, Cory, look at you manifesting things into reality. Scooby stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, which doesn't sound as fun as Scooby. No, it really doesn't. Isn't that Scooby? Um, Sco- it could also be Scooby. Scooby. Sco- 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 oh, hello, Scooby. Yeah, but Scooby doesn't sound. Scooby. Sco- Sco- <laughs> Mm, so scum. it lives up to the name it's just a mixed culture of yeast and bacteria living together and feeding off the products that each other make kind of in a symbiotic relationship like us and trees like we if you lived in a tree then yes I've never been eaten I by a tree I do live in a tree <laughs> you don't, I've been well, to your house we live amongst trees like everything we have is made of wood basically a or big, bricks a big tree yeah, right okay there. but the the bacteria aren't chopping up their yeast to live in them <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's little, like, <laughs> little bacteria axes chopping up some yeast. It's like a it's like a flat share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So a b- film of bacteria nanocellulose. Sorry, you're gonna have to say that again. A film of bacteria nanocellulose. A film of bacteria nanocellulose can form on top of the culture, and that's also called a scoby. This is really confusing, by the way. Yes. So, so scoby is the name for the culture. Scoby. And also the film that forms on top can be called a scoby. And also another thing I'm talking about later is also called a scoby. What? Philip Scoby. <laughs> this is dreadful. <laughs> it is. I, I don't know who allowed this to happen. So, but- let me recap. So, bacteria and yeast living together, a scoby. Yes. On top of those bacteria and yeast, there is a cellulose layer that, of film that is on top of it. That's yes. called a scoby. Yes. Something else we'll discuss is called a scoby. There's three scoby. There's three scobies. Okay. Just like in Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, Scooby Dumb, Scooby. Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Scrappy Doo, and Scooby Dumb, his his cousin that never shows up. Okay, carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just that's the process that's used to make uh, kombucha, which is what I've been drinking this entire I was time. I was wondering why you've been cradling the and kombucha. And I brought one for you guys as well. Oh, yeah. I know. yeah, one, one to share. I brought the three, but we were supposed to record earlier, and I've drank them. <laughs> well, give us your one that you're currently drinking, then. Terrible. This person. is mine. You can. I'm just getting you try it. Jeez, I bought you drinks, Luke. You can't be like one. I've never had kombucha before. How is it? It's weird. It is strange. You look genuinely disgusted. No, I'm not disgusted. Raspberry with pomegranate. No, 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 no pomegranate. So is that is that kombucha? Lightly sparkling cola. That tastes like the old cola bottles I used to have. Oh, here. that's really good. Yeah. It is good. Try the cola one. So they've also got um Wait, there's also a ginger that. one that I've had as well. I see I like that one less. Yeah, I don't I, know. Is that made out of the 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 film on top of the yeast and the bacteria? No, so as far as I'm aware, it's essentially the same as kind of making beer or wine. Right. So they use it to ferment. St- they use the bacteria and yeast. To- but it's scoby bacteria. So it's not so it's scoby yeast. It's not. So scoby is the name for the bacteria and the yeast right. together. So yeah. they use uh, a scoby to make kombucha. You can actually do wow. it yourself. You can get a kit online to make your own kombucha. To make your own. Wow. Can't yeah. Do it. No. I kind of wanna. Well, I mean, it's not it, enough to actually do it. The thing is, it's one of those things that it. It seems like more of a pain than it's worth. You'd be yeah. just as well buying it because it's like making wine. You're almost certainly gonna. You're almost certainly gonna get your culture contaminated because yeah, the people that are doing it at home are don't know how to work with yeah. <laughs> like bacteria and yeast. So it's it's a, yeah, it's like kind of a sparkling tea drink. They kind of break down tea it's, leaves. Yeah, I nice. didn't know it was sparkling. 
it's just slightly sparkling, but it's naturally sparkling. So obviously when um, yeast ferment stuff, mm. they produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it's not very alcoholic. Usually about, I think you can get up to like 14%. Really? Oh my God. Yeah. Do you guys know what yeast are? Yeast. Or y- is. Yes. Tell me about yeast. I would guess that it is a form of fungus. It is, mm. which I should have known, but I didn't. <laughs> For reference, I studied biotechnology for three years, which <laughs> which involves a lot of working with yeast, and I never considered like I never looked up to see what like what um what kind of order they were in. Yeah, or what, what, what organism kingdom, it what, is. Yeah, what kingdom they were in. Which kingdom are you yeah. from, yeast? The kingdom of fungus. <laughs> yeah, so it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. But yeah. it seems weird. No, it does seem weird, doesn't it? So they're unicellular eukaryotic organisms. Do you guys know what what is I was going to say? Do what does eukaryotic mean? Uh, it's what you and I are. It essentially means you've got. <laughs> there's no easy way to describe this. I'm just going to give you the full scientific answer. You need to have membrane-bound organelles inside of your cells in order to be eukaryotic. Just like us, James. Oh. Just like oh, us. Obviously, so like, now uh, I understand. like mitochondria. So that's a that's a the powerhouse of the cell. Yes. So <laughs> is that the one thing you've learned from this podcast? Yes. No. Or from <laughs> Tumblr. Tumblr. <laughs> so uh, an organelle like mitochondria, it's just. It's just a little thing that does something in your body, in your cells, that's wrapped in a little membrane. Okay. Nice. Like a little bacteria inside a bacteria. That's what we think it is, actually. Wow. We genuinely think that- Look at me discovering science on my own. We genuinely think that chloroplasts and plants, that's what makes them uh, make food from sunlight and Mm. water. Mm. And mitochondria, which is what gives us energy, those were um, originally a kind of symbiotic relationship between two cells. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Because um, they've got their own, mitochondria have got their own DNA, their own kind of DNA. Yeah, yeah, you get that from your mum. From your mum, yeah. The species we usually talk about of yeast is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Cerevisiae. Is that a magic spell? It's so <laughs> difficult. <laughs> What's happening to me? It makes beer. Why am I turning into yeast? <laughs> Shrinking to be very, very small. <laughs> so that's the most familiar one to you guys. That's the one that you use generally to make beer and wines and bread. <laughs> I no. don't. Brad, well, what? no, not you. In, look, at, not you personally. <laughs> yes. But one. One. Yes. One bread maker. And it's actually kind of um, originally thought to have been found on the skin of grapes. Wow. Yeah, you can. Look, you get that. Ooh. You get like yeast on the skin of um, fruits, like plums and stuff. So do you know yeah, you've got the white, yeah. kind of like waxy. The fl- is it the wax or is it the fluff? It's not fluff. That's that's, that's if when you it goes leave off. it in the fridge. I'm thinking of a peach. I'm <laughs> So when dark fruits get kind of like white bits on them, yes, that's a lot of that is yeast. Mm. Yeah, and you yeah. can just leave mm. leave them for a bit, and they'll ferment and give you booze. It's nice that the world does that, isn't it? Well, the world just gives you free alcohol. <laughs> just gives you free alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just gotta wait for my plums to ferment. That's just one of the. That's really weird because that's like that's like I like to think a lot about how basically the world we live in. I know we have a scientific explanation for it, but essentially the world we live in is surrounded by free air all the time. The sky rains free water. The ground makes free vegetables. We live in like this weird thing that just gives us free stuff all the time. Yeah. And one of those things is the earth Until apparently just air. gives us free alcohol. I've now learned that. Yeah, Great. I mean, you can put if you put them all in like a kind of pot, they'll probably make booze. Might not be safe to drink all the time, but <laughs> but animals do. Alcohol. Like there are birds that go and eat like like fermenting uh, fruit and get drunk and mm. love it. They get crazy mm. for it. <laughs> yeah, because it'll make it just makes pure ethanol. <laughs> it essentially, <laughs> makes pure ethanol. <laughs> so that's yeast. Uh, just so a- that's yeast. <laughs> that's yeast. <laughs> Scoby has a yeast. Infection. Oh my god! I need to breathe. <clears throat> and now, and now, and now to Scoby packaging. The yeah, third Scoby the that third I was talking Scobie. about. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So you guys have never heard of Rosa Janus? I no. Mean, no, she's Polish. Is she a fun guy? She's a person, James. Don't. <laughs> don't and do a that. woman. You said the fun guy comes in at some point. Fungi, fungus, like yeast. I, yeast is no, a fungus. Oh my god. You're an idiot. We've no, been talking about this. Is she a fungi? No. No, we've Stop made it. talking. <laughs> Rosa is a Polish farmer and industrial design student, although I, she I doubt. She has 10 apples. I doubt she's a student she anymore. Gives three of them to John. How many apples John, has she left? John's a fun guy. John's, no, John is not a fun guy. John he's is collecting, very boring. He's collecting apples. He's not fun. <laughs> I'm just going to read a quote from Rosa yeah, while you guys yeah, spin yeah. your wheels. In her own words, she said she wanted to combine fabrication with cultivation, as she believed making and growing together can create regenerative processes and products. Making and growing what? Yeast? Just things. Things? Just stuff. That's very broad, Rosa. It's very broad, but it, it, essentially, uh, to translate what she said um, into plain English, yeah. 
if you grow things rather than make them, like, you know, with chemical processes, yeah, then it's better. Oh, absolutely. I agree. I, I was thinking the other day that I reckon we will end up in a place where we will grow hmm. a quantum computer in the way that our brains are quite likely to be based on quantum computing in some way or in some way uh, based on quantum processes. And so if we can work out how quantum works, you can make stuff a lot smaller if you grow it than if you make it, mm. which is essentially what she's saying, really, isn't it? It is similar to what she's saying. That's exactly what she's saying. Because so if, if you grow something, you start from the smallest and make it bigger. Whereas if you make something, you start from really big and try mm. and make small stuff, yeah. which is not as easy. It's kind of like what we were talking about last week, how Alan Turing thought it's best to create a very simple mind and then teach it things rather than mm. try and create a fully fledged mind. And that's what they've done with machine learning. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Alan. Good job. So as I understand it, she didn't initially set out to replace plastic packaging. She just wanted to d- make something. Right. Is she yeah. still alive? No, this was recently. Okay, then she didn't. Oh, so, okay, right. No, right. So she didn't want to find... It's not that she... She didn't set out to find a replacement for pa- plastic packaging. She just kind of wanted to do something and then realised that, oh, this is the this is the, this is is the best thing to do. Great. So essentially what she did was she got... um. A kind of kombucha kit, a scoby kit, and made the initial material. She was like, what can I do with this? What's the most pressing problem? She thought it was plastic packaging. And she decided to tackle that. Nice. Is this in some way using the the film that scoby makes on top of it? Exactly. Is she, is it, yeah. she using that to make some kind of plastic alternative? Yeah, exactly. So she, Brilliant. so initially, she, like I said, she got the kit. She had the tea and the sugar, and she made the film. And she then spoke to some scientists to try and figure out how to make it better. So after a few goes at it, um, she's now able to make the material um, using sugar and agricultural waste. Wow. Yeah, so you can, it's essentially, it, it, it's pretty much self-sustaining. How, How thick is this film? Is it thick enough to, like, stick together and make and package stuff? Um, it's quite thin. I don't know, I don't have an exact. So it might be, um, is it, like, thick enough in its natural state? Or is it, like, you have to create layers of it in order for it to be strong enough to be used by us? Um, so essentially what it is, it's kind of like a gloop. Yeah. Um, when it's initially made, and then she dries it out. So you can right. use multiple. It depends what you what you're using it for. Yeah. But ultimately, for most things, they kind of hold their own structure. You just need to keep it away from the air. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Although it looks quite dis- it looks quite disgusting. Can we see? A yeah, I'll show you a picture. Oh, we'll we'll put it up on the Twitter or something, so you can go have a look. So how does she make it exactly? She gets this. Know. So you get this. Let me try and summarize. Mm-hmm. See if I understand. She gets the scoby bacteria and yeast, and she lets it make the film the uh, the second scoby right the second yes, scoby yes. Th- th- those scobies make the scoby film on top of, on top of them and then she gets that film and she dries it out and she makes the product scoby which is her form of plastic oh. like her new thing for plastic oh. packaging am i right is that yeah. right cool yeah. ah. wow so I this listened. is what it looks like it kind of looks like dried skin uh, oh. no why don't we just use that looks skin a bit like dead we could skin, use yeah. skin like why don't we just get whose skin, skin? My skin? I don't think you have enough skin, Luke. Oh. I'm sorry. I know you wanted to use it, but we you can't. And also, this is that. entirely edible. I haven't mentioned this so yet. So is my skin. I don't want to eat your no, skin. Thank you. I'd rather eat skin. I'd rather eat goop from the ocean made by yeast and bacteria. Yes. It's not from the ocean. It's from. She so makes it in vats. Very long, very thin vats. This is, this is why it's so good. Because it's very, very easy to make. Yeah. And it's quite efficient. Like corn. That was my next question. Yes, I was like, like, how easy is, is this to produce? Very easy. Very so easy. She can, she's essentially got the idea that you can, de- you can decentralize the production of this. So, as I'm sure you understand, plastic is made generally in quite big So you could factories. grow it in a supermarket. In yeah. The- wow. Or better yet, you could, you, could take, you could go to a farm, you could grow it there. Because it, really, it doesn't need sunlight. It ah, just needs to be kept at room wow. temperature for about two weeks. And it's ready. Really thin vat, yeah. um, and ultimately, if that's nice. the case, then you can kind of layer them as well. And that would make food last longer because it would it could be processed at the farm and instantly wrapped up. Exactly. So wow. you don't need. To, and it also cuts down on CO two emissions because you don't need to have the so much transport costs. Yeah, because there's the some plastic. stuff with like Whoa. our food where it's like grown in one part of the world, flown out to Jamaica. Like apples are flown out to Jamaica to be waxed and packaged, and then flown back to the UK, and they're grown in the UK to begin with, and that's just so stupid. What? It is ridiculous. And this, so this is really, really good packaging. And it's so, edible, so you can eat it. Yeah, no, you can eat it mm. or you can uh, <gasps> no compost plastic waste. it. Wow. So, are, 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 or it's bi- yeah, biodegradable. It's biodegradable, exactly. 
Um, Brilliant. So and it is really, really good as a as a package. It's literally a solution for, for everything. Yeah, for so many reasons. So <laughs> it's got a low pH, which which helps food from going off. Being acidic. Yeah, and it's got some um, antibacterial properties as well, supposedly. And you can you can use um, the original Scoby to make more. Why are we using yeah. this everywhere? Well, because it's you'd have to because you'd gross. have to take down the entirety of the plastic industry. Is oh. it ready though? Is it like if someone wanted to do this, is it ready today? It's not fully scaled up. She's speaking right. to com- what she's doing now. Is she's speaking to companies to try and um, figure out how to get this rolled out. I don't yeah. think it's. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think it's something that's gonna really yeah happen anytime soon. I think it's a good idea, and if it's as good as what she, as she says it is, yeah, then it would. Because the thing is, is like it might be brilliant, but actually, if it requires, for example, quite a lot of energy to make. Then it's just making that. Then it's making a different issue. Yeah. It's making global warming to solve the plastic problem. Like, however, I mean, ultimately, it has so to be it's, more efficient so it's not, than the refining of oil. Well, yeah. it, it, it is kind of it's quite efficient. the The issue with most of the the issue with most of these these kind of processes, in terms of, and this is exactly what I did my degree on, in terms of scaling up and um, and rolling it out everywhere. It can be a lot of money to start off with, mm. and improving the process yeah. to being better than um, chemical or artificial processes is quite difficult because yeah. you're working with living organisms that can mutate and just die for seemingly no reason and yeah. be like destroyed by by like mixing them too hard. It's That's called so sheer stress, and it's actually a thing. Mixing things too hard can kill stress. them. Sheer stress. Yeah, <laughs> genuinely. I think I'm going to die from sheer stress. Yeah, you can you can die from you can die from sheer. Stress. That's like being killed by um being hit by waves. Ah, oh, yeah, you nice. mean like literally torn apart. But yeah, that that'd be the main issue scaling it up to to that level. However, the interesting part is that if you were to say if you were to say be like a small um, farmers market stall, or or wanted to transport your your fruit from like a small farm to anywhere or or anything like that, you could use you could use this because it's not that much of an upfront cost. Mm. And it is yeah. it's just really simple to it's really simple to set up and do. It it's made with waste. So it's not like you need to put energy into it. It's energy that's already come from somewhere else. When you else. say it's made from waste, is it is it like waste as in like plastic products or is it waste as in like waste food? So waste food product as yeah, in yeah. when it agricultural waste, um as in Poo. Made from leftovers. Not, not necessarily that, but like um, parts that we wouldn't use anyway. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like so, like, bits of animal or. or let's like, say corn husk. So, it's, yeah. it's probably it's from plant material. It's not going to be oh, from animal okay. material. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. It's really I good. Think that's great. It's a really good idea. We and it's everywhere. Um, so, when you said there are three Scobies. Yeah, that's the third They're Scobie. actually kind of one Scobie. Like, they're all one process, they're all part of the same thing. Yes. It's just we call they them all refer, Yeah, they refer to different. They refer to different, different kind use of cases. different parts of yeah different parts of the process or different they're used in different kind of semantic ways yeah yeah um another good thing about Very it cool. like I said it's, it is edible um but it might actually be healthy for you wow because it's got bacteria in it and apparently that bacteria is good bacteria for your gut wow ah. so eating it can like, scoby. eat your scoby or there's eat no your dessert scoby. <laughs> what's for dessert. It's scoby. scoby. More scoby. But mother, we had scoby for dinner and More breakfast. More scoby. It's good for your gut. <laughs> so it can also be used, and this is this is something that's really cool as well, because obviously people use plastic packaging for just fruit, which has its own natural packaging. But obviously that's for um, people that yeah, might be disabled or unable to, like, peel an orange, let's say. But this is a brilliant solution to that, because it's just, it's just a bit of film. Just eat the packet. That's so you cool. You can eat the packet, You have to exactly. wash it, though, but yeah, you can eat it. Yeah. I do think that I do think that there's there's something to be said that plastic, while obviously dreadful, it does get a bit of a bad <laughs> gets a bit of a bad, bad rap, rap. <laughs> <laughs> because the, I, I, the, I may be making this entirely up. Something, some big supermarket put out a statement being like, yes, obviously plastic is dreadful, but it it is required because the amount of food waste you'd have if you didn't use plastic would be just astronomical, and so. I'm not at all saying we shouldn't be doing this and putting so much money into it, but in the actual here and now, it it is kind of necessary in order that our food, our production and supply chain can continue to exist. Yes and no on that. Like yes, we like there would be a mass amount of food waste, but the the thing is, we saying that we need plastic is almost the wrong mindset. It's we need the, we need packaging. It's the yeah yeah yeah. It's yeah. The, it's that our current system is designed around plastic, and replacing that's going to take time. Exactly. So obviously. 
reduce your plastic all the time. Don't buy stuff in plastic if you can. But like the actual like the, the kind of shouting at the government or shouting at companies like, why are you using plastic? It's like, well, we kind of have to right now. Like we're trying. Yeah, yeah but th- th- they say that as a defense. But then also the plastic packaging isn't stopping my, ba- my bananas from going off because it's got holes in, you know? The thing is with bananas, um, this is really interesting. They they kind of send out a chemical that makes fruit go off quicker. Oh, that's all fruit. Yeah, but bananas in particular are really bad for it. Supposedly. What? That's yeah, so mad, you shouldn't really? store. Suppose, you shouldn't store your bananas next to other fruit because they will make them go off quicker. Wow. Or make them ripen quicker. But yeah, ripen quicker, but then go back quicker. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna segregate my bananas into their own cupboard. They will be alone, and it's their fault for being so pesky. <laughs> Exactly. They don't play well with others. <laughs> they make all the other children <laughs> old and wrinkly. <laughs> Imagine if you put your child with a child, and then that child made your child go wrinkly Just and old. Just be a bad influence, and isn't rot it? away. <laughs> yeah, I'm so decaying. That is that is the story of Scobie. That's the story of Scobie. Well done, Rosa. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, Rosa, for Scobie. Good job. Um, it also does have other uses. So I went to their website. You can buy a sample. I didn't, because... <laughs> But we had kombucha, so Because uh, I didn't know how long it was going to take to arrive, and I didn't plan this episode <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah, but you can you can go and buy it. It is it is totally possible, and it is possible to make your own. Does the scoby well. come packaged inside more scoby? <laughs> I don't really know. It's just a, it's just a forever <laughs> scoby. It's like more and more. turtles Consider- all the way down. Yeah. Scoby parcel all the way, all the way down. down. Uh, yeah, so they're also making trans leather, um, which is not what it sounds like. It's actually vegan leather. Just Google Scoby. So they're you'll, trying to make vegan leather out of Scoby. How do you spell Scoby? Uh, S C O B Y. Symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, James. Just in case anyone forgot. They're trying to make vegan. Yeah, they are trying to make vegan leather out of it. And so you could eat your clothes. You wouldn't want to. But you could. <laughs> you get, I mean, you can eat your clothes now. You'd get arrested. That's true. You can eat leather. But don't eat leather. You Please. could eat leather. I mean, you can eat. You can eat cotton. And it's also used to make, as I said, kombucha. Scoby. Yum. Yeah. So lots of lots of good uses. Go Scoby. Go Scoby. Go Scoby. Yeah, so we the reason invest. I decided to talk about... Oh? We should invest. In Scoby. In Scoby. I think we're in a bit late. The reason I decided to talk about this story today was because I thought it was kind of at the core of what I want this podcast to be, in a little bit of a way. Yeah. As in, Rosa isn't a scientist. She she was just a student, like a design student, an agriculture mm. student. And she just decided to do this, and it worked out. So you can do it as well. We, you don't need to be a scientist. It's a lot of pressure. Go on, well, Yeah, Luke. Solve the plastic problem. I'm going right to go invent scoping. you got 10 minutes. Do it. Use less plastic. Eat less fish. The end. Yeah. Is that, Good. Is yeah. that the show? Is that an episode? That's an episode. Know, you're meant to tell us whether it's the show or not. Well, I don't know. I thought you guys might have something to say. No. Not today. No thoughts? No, <laughs> <laughs> no thoughts on the past hour of recording? No. Um, my thoughts. Sounds delicious. I want to try it. You're talking about the leather. No, the SCOBY. <laughs> Not the leather, the SCOBY. Thanks for listening. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, and why not leave us a nice wee review? We review. Find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCory everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. I might do that. Nah. You, you already do. I hope I don't. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.